بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله ومن ولا وبعد This evening بإذن الله تعالى This is going to be our 28th session Reading from the Sharh of Al-Aqeedah Al-Wasitiyah Al-Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah in the commentary of Imam Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, Rahimahullah. Before we go into the new chapter that we're going to look at tonight, I'm going to briefly go over <coughs> some of the points that we discussed last week from the questionnaire study guide for lecture number 27. First question being, how does the shari, yani the explainer of the text, Define what is meant by Allah's knowledge being qadim or ancient. And how does the shari' define what is meant by Allah's knowledge being qadim? Or uh, Zakariya. No no that his knowledge has no beginning and he always had this knowledge and it has no ending. He will never be without it. And he negating, and him ever not having known ignorance, and also negating the possibility of forgetfulness. The second question, when were the maqadir, the details of everything in the creation written, and where was the arsh at that time? I mean, Naam, the maqadir, the details of everything that's going to happen in the creation were written 50,000 years before Allah created the heavens and the earth. And at, th- at that time, the arsh of Allah was upon the water, as mentioned in the authentic hadith. Question number three, memorize a dalil from the 37th surah, 96 ayah, which mentions that Allah is the creator of the actions of the human being. Abdul Wali. Allahu. 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 Allah khalaqakum. Allah created you all. And He created what you do, yani your actions, your deeds. And this ayat is in refutation and against those who claim that the human being is the creator of their own actions. Human beings are the creator of their own actions. Who are the people who said this? Human beings are the creator of their own actions. Very important matter. Yeah, now, yes, you have your hand up? Yeah, fadl. Okay, the Mu'tazila. Tayyib. What do we say? Who created it? Allah created it. The human beings created their own actions. The, first of all, let's go back yani, to the beginning. Yani, there are two deviations here, and we want to be clear on these deviations. Yani, one of the groups of people deviated said that the human being doesn't have any any control over the actions. They don't have any actions of their own. They're just doing what they're forced to do. Which group is that? Naam. Jabriya. Jabriya. So the opposite of them are those who say the human being are completely independent of Allah's creation. And the opposite of the Jabriya is the Qadariya. Qadariya. Tayyip. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say when asked why should we perform actions since everything is decreed and written? Yani why should we perform actions? What's the benefit? What's the purpose if everything is already decreed? It's already written. What is going to be? What was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's answer? <laughs> now, Fadda, Ahmed. I have, I have, uh, he says, uh, do good for it will be made easy for you. And he do good for every person will have it made easy for them to do that which they were created for. 
that which they were created for. And the people, the Prophet ﷺ said, as far as the Ahlu as saada and the people of happiness, of good fortune, the people being in paradise, Allah will make it easy for them to do any of the deeds of the people of paradise. And as far as the Ahlu as shaqawa the people of wretchedness, the people who will be in the hellfire, Allah will make it easy for them to do the deeds of the people of hellfire. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying here, a person must do actions. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that some people will be in the paradise and some people in the hellfire based on what he knows the people are going to do. And then he made it easy for the people who want to do good to do those good deeds due to which and he, they would attain Allah's mercy and by his mercy he will admit them into paradise. <coughs> Question number five. Summarize the deviation of the Qadariyah. The Qadariya from the Mu'tazila. The Qadariya who are from Mu'tazila. Yeah, I just want to make a note in case it wasn't clear last week that some of these groups overlap in that they are identified by different names depending on what aspect of deviation we're talking about. So when we talk about the deviation in reference to the divine decree, the people who negate Allah's yeah, any control over the actions of the human beings, the human beings do their own actions, we refer to them as the Qadariya. They are from the Ma'tazila. But these Ma'tazila, they have many different deviations. And depending on which deviation we're talking about, we may refer to them as the Wa'idiya, or the Qadariya, or the Ma'tazila, depending on what we're talking about. So try to distinguish between yeah, any the title or the description that's given to them based on the issue of Aqeelah that we're talking about. <coughs> So the question here, summarize the deviation of the Qadariya, and yani the people who deviated in reference to the Qadr, who were from the Mu'tazila, as it relates to the Af'al, the actions of the human beings. Naam, Ameen. Uh, at one point, they believe that Allah didn't have any Qadr, but that's not the case. And yani the old, the people of the ancient times of, the, of them, they used to say that Allah doesn't. They used to deny Allah's knowledge, that it was written, what people would do. And then later on, they left that, and they only maintained what? They, they maintain that the actions, in reference to the actions of the human being, what did they say about the actions of the human beings? That Allah's will, yani that the actions of the human being are not sub subject to Allah's will or His creation, His Mashiach and His Khalq. Rather, the human being does whatever he wants to do. And He's the creator of His own actions. And for this reason, the Prophet ﷺ compared them or referred to them as the Majus. Majus hadi al ummah because why? Because the Majus believe that they are two creators, creative good and evil, and the and these people believe what? That the human being is creative of his own actions, and Allah is the creator of other than that. <coughs> Question number six What does the Sharia explainer of the text say? What does he say is intended by a taqdeer al umuri and a taqdeer al sanawi? What does he say is meant by a taqdeer al umuri? And a taqdeer al sanawi. Now, who's that? Um, Hussein. Huh? Hussein. Hussein. Now. Now, father. A taqdeer al umri. Taqdeer al umri wa taqdeer al sanawi. Okay, the sanawi is the yearly qadr that takes place during the qadr. That once a year in Laylatul Qadr, the, the Taqdeer Sanawi comes down, naam. As far as the Taqdeer Umri, naam. That's your uh, lifetime uh, Qadr? Like the lifetime Qadr, Umri. I need lifetime Qadr that takes place when? One year is in four months. When the embryo is in the womb of the mother, at the point of four months, Allah sends the angel to write four matters. And he also mentioned in passing, though he didn't give any description about it, any, that the Taqdeer al yawmi Taqdeer al yawmi yani the every day, what's going to happen in the course of that day is also a taqdeer. All of this is the detailed taqdeer of what is already written in what? No. Allahu mahfuz. Now, question number seven discuss briefly the point or purpose of mentioning the ayat from Surah Al Layl. The ayat from Surah Al Layl. 30, um, I don't know, <sighs> subhanAllah. It should be the 90th surah, 5th to 10th ayat. <laughs> Allahumma stan. I have a pen somewhere. Right. What, what is the point of mentioning these ayats from Surah Al-Layl? 
Why, why did the Sheikh mention this in the end of his commentary? What is it in reference to? What is it any related to, connected to? Anybody? So he mentioned just before that the hadith in which the Prophet said yani that every person you need to do deeds because every person will find it made easy for him to do what he was created for. And then he explained that that means that the Ahlu, the Sa'ada, the people of paradise, will be made easy to do the deeds of the people of paradise and the opposite. The people, the Ahlu, the Shaqawa, and it will be made easy for them to do the deeds of the people of Hellfire. And then he mentioned this ayat. What was the point of mentioning this ayat, these ayat? Because they confirm the meaning of the hadith, the same meaning. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people who give and who observe taqwa and testify to the husna, yani la ilaha illallah, then Allah will make easy for them. Allah will make, we, Allah says he will make easy for them, yani the way to ease, yani the way to do good deeds to enter the paradise. And the opposite, yani the people who do the opposite, Allah will make easy for them, yani the way to difficulty, meaning to do evil deeds to enter the hellfire. Yani this, these ayats were mentioned to support, yani to confirm, yani to show agreement between what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, that it also came in the Quran. Allahumma yassir lana umurna. Tonight, be in the Ta'ala. We're going to look at the next chapter. Uh, I didn't write down the page numbers, but I'll just look at it right now. <clears throat> We're going to try to go through this chapter in its entirety. The Arabic text is beginning on page 106. And in the English, it begins on page... Huh? 187. In English, it begins on page 187. And in Arabic, it begins on page 106. Before we start reading, I want to just make a note from the English translation. Whoever is reading from the English translation, please pay attention. Oh, everybody should pay attention, but especially because you have to correct two mistakes that actually are absolutely you know, misleading. And it's not like a choice of words, but actually it's absolutely wrong. It's not the fault of the translator. We translators, we have our own share of mistakes. But this came from the Arabic, mistakes in the Arabic. It was translated as it came in Arabic, but what's in Arabic is wrong. All right, so it says in English, on page 190, on page 190, I'm sorry, page 189, I'll start from page 189. On page 189, there are two places. On page 189, the bottom part of the page, under the explanation, fourth line, Fourth line, this is what Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah are upon in contrast to the Murji'ah from the Mu'tazila and the Murji'ah from the Khawarij. What's wrong with that? They are opposites. There's no Murji'ah from the Mu'tazila and there's no Murji'ah from the Khawarij. And they are the opposite. They are the opposite. The mistake came from the Arabic though. But nonetheless, our, us translators, we're also responsible to check, right, the Arabic. We don't just go with anything that's written there. So this is a bad mistake, because the person will be confused. Who are the murjia from the, I mean, the mu'tazila from the murjia, and who are the khawarij from the murjia? I mean, what does that mean? Like a person is lost with that. It has no meaning whatsoever. So please pay attention. Second place. <clears throat> On page, next page, 190, first, second, third, fourth paragraph, fourth paragraph, loving Allah, where well, he's giving examples of the different types, examples of what is the iman of the heart and the iman of the tongue and the imam of the limbs, loving Allah, fearing him in sincerity or actions of the heart. Being truthful is an action of the heart. It should be tasdeeq, yani testifying to something being the truth is an action of the heart. No problem. Remembrance of Allah. And here there's several words that are mentioned here. 
and they all translate it in just the word remembrance, yani, which is a problem in and of itself. But remembrance of Allah is an action of the limbs. Remembrance of Allah is an action of the limbs. What's the problem here? A dhikr is from the actions of what? Of the tongue. And it's clearly, and he, it came like that in Arabic. But nonetheless, and it's clearly wrong. Okay, so whoever knows this subject, and you have to pay attention, especially when you're reading books in English. But even in Arabic, you have to pay attention. But especially reading books in English. This is a bad mistake, and it's clearly wrong. And if a person doesn't know, they read that, and they believe that, yani, dhikr is from the actions of the limbs, of the body. That's what they will be believing. So I just wanted to point out those two mistakes, because any there, any, anybody who translates knows that yani, when you translate, you're going to make mistakes. Human beings are subject to mistakes, no doubt about it. These are mistakes that would confuse a person and mislead a person. I have to make note of that. Now let's get on with the chapter for today. The new chapter, um, again, I'm reading in Arabic from page 106. At the top of the page it says, Had al-Iman wa hukmu martakib al-kabira inda ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. Had al-Iman, what is intended by had here is definition. The definition of Iman. What, what is the definition of Iman? According to ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. And what is the hukum, the ruling concerning the person who commits the major sin? who commits major sins, according to Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So there are two matters in this chapter. The first matter is, yani the definition. What is the definition of Iman, according to Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah? And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, in the first paragraph, he gives that answer. The second matter is, what is the ruling concerning the person who commits the major sins, according to Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah? Or both of these, according to Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. What is the definition of Iman? And what is the ruling concerning the person who commits major sins? So in the second paragraph, he talks about the khawarij. Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah. In the second paragraph, after giving the definition of Iman, he talks about the khawarij and their deviation and them declaring people who commit major sins to be kafirs. And then he refutes them quickly. And he with just a couple of evidences. In the third paragraph, he talks about the mu'tazila and their deviation. How they deviated from the correct definition of Iman according to Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah in that they declared the person who commit major sins to be totally out of Iman and not to be a believer anymore and to be and permanently in the hellfire. And he also refused them with quickly and a quick couple of evidences from the Quran. And in the next, in the fourth paragraph, he mentions another evidence to refute them and then he ends by saying, and in the fourth paragraph, he ends with saying, how do we actually describe the people, the Muslims, who commit major sins, who didn't commit major sins that took them out of Islam? And they committed major sins, but not, and they didn't worship an idol, <laughs> and which takes a person out of Islam, and you know what, from the Nawakat of Islam. But major sins, a person killed somebody, and they, they committed fornication, whatever, these are major sins. So... If they are wrong, if the Khawarij are wrong saying that they yani, are Kafirs and the Mu'tazila are also wrong saying that they are no longer believers at all. They are out of Iman. And they are in between Iman and Kufr. If they are also wrong, so what, how do we describe these people? So in the last paragraph he tells us how do we then describe these people? The correct view. Okay, so these are four paragraphs and four paragraphs. In each paragraph he mentions a point briefly and makes it crystal clear. How, what is correct, and what is the deviation, and then what's the solution? I need to solve their confusion. Alright? I'm saying that because and this is a big topic, and it's explained briefly in a few words, in four paragraphs. And then the Shaykh, Yani Abdulaziz bin Ibaz, and he summarizes also the commentary. And this is probably a whole, any books can be written about this topic. So, we just want to be clear on what is actually happening here so that we can follow it easily and benefit, inshallah. So there are a lot of other points that could be mentioned here, but this is what we're going to suffice with. And again, I'll refer you back to the bigger explanations of Sheikh Salih Fawzan, Hafidhullah, and the explanation of Imam Muhammad ibn Salih Uthaymin, Both of them explain in a lot more detail than what we're going to be able to cover in this one city. <coughs> so I'm reading from page 106. The definition of Iman and the ruling concerning the one who commits major sins according to Ahl al-Sunnah al-Jama'ah. Qala al-Mu'allaf, rahimahullah. 
من أصول أهل السنة والجماعة أن الدين والإيمان قول وعمل and from the fundamentals the foundations of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that the deen and iman are speech and action this is the definition that he gives in general brief and then he gives the details concerning that the brief definition of iman is that it is qawlun wa amalun here i want to note that when the scholars say that iman is qawl and amal they take it for granted that you already know that iman includes what's in the heart and the conviction in the heart but everybody agrees in the conviction in the heart, even the murjiyah and everybody else. But what the problem is, the speech and action. They differ about that. So that's why they said it's speech and action. Not that it's just speech and action. It's that which is in the heart, the conviction in the heart. And, but it also includes speech and action. And this is where the deviants differ. He said that from the fundamentals, the foundations of Ahl Sunnah, wal Jama'ah, is that the deen, and Iman is speech and action. And then he gives the details of that definition. He says, Qawlu al Qalbi wal Lisani. Yani that is speech of the heart and speech of the tongue. Wa amalu al Qalb wal Lisan wal Jawari. And it is the actions of the heart and the actions of the tongue and the actions of the limbs of the body. So it's it's speech, qawl, and it's action. The speech is in the of the heart and is of the tongue, and the actions of the heart and the tongue and the limbs of the body. And some scholars, as we see in the explanation, will say that the actions is of the heart and the limbs of the body, because the action of the tongue is also already included in the speech, speech of the heart and speech of the tongue. And the scholars explained it in various different ways, but we're going to try to keep it as simple as possible here, right? Okay, so this is the most, this is the core of the issue. What is the definition, what is the true definition of Iman? According to Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, it's that which includes yani the conviction of the heart along with both speech and action. What kind of speech? Speech of the heart, speech of the tongue. What kind of action? Actions of the heart, actions of the tongue, actions of the limbs of the body. And the evidences for this are many. And uh, both of the more lengthy explanations of Aqid al Wasati, of Sheikh Salih Fagan, and Al Imam Ibn Sal Ibn Uthaymeen, both of them give some of the explanations, uh, some of the de- de- um, evidences for each of these points. <coughs> then he says, وَهُمْ مَا ذَلِكَ لَا يُكَفِّرُونَ أَهْلُ الْقِبْلَةِ بمطلق المعاصي والكبائر كما يفعله الخوارج. He is refuting the Khawarij. وهم ما ذلك يعني أهل السنة والجماعة هم means أهل السنة والجماعة ما ذلك. In spite of the fact that they say that iman includes speech and actions, nonetheless they didn't declare the people of the qibla to be kafirs, even though it includes speech and actions and some of the actions of the people, يعني are evil, are very bad. Maybe it even could be kufr. But he says, but in spite of that, that they include the speech and action in Iman, they didn't declare the Ahlul Qibla, the people who face the Qibla, who pray towards the Qibla. They didn't declare them to be Kafirs, like the Khawarij did. They didn't declare them to be Kafir, be mutlaq al maasi wal kabair. This is very important. This is very important. Some of the scholars said, what is meant here by mutlaq al maasi? What is meant here is, he didn't say they didn't declare them to be kafirs by sins and major sins. He said, mutlaq al maasi. And the meaning here is that, that indeed there are some sins that are kufr, due to which a person would be declared to be a kafir. But mutlaq al maasi means sins in general. Sins in general. They didn't declare them just because they committed sin to be a kafir. Although, yes, there are some sins that are kufr. That if a person commit them, he became a kafir. But he said, mutlaq al-ma'asi. They didn't declare them to be kafirs just by sins. Asl al-ma'asi. Or al-kabaya. Or even by major sins. As was done by the khawarij. And then he refutes them. Here's his refutation against them. The khawarij said, person commits major sins, he became a kafir. He's out of iman. He's out of Islam. He became a kafir. Shaykh Hussain to me said, Bal al ukhuwa al imaniya thabitatun ma al maasi. Rather, 
the brotherhood of Iman, al ukhuwa al imaniyah the brotherhood that's based on Iman. Yani, you are my brother because of Iman. Not because we're from the same mother or from the same mother and father, but because of Iman. We're brothers based on Iman. That Iman that makes us brothers remains. A person remains, yani, in the brotherhood of Iman, even with sins, even in spite of sins. So that means sins doesn't take a person out of Iman. Because the Iman remains. And that's why we remain yani, in the Ukhuwa Imaniyah, the brotherhood of Iman, even in spite of sins. And the proof of that is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Ayat al Qisas, in the Ayat relate, related to retaliation. And in the Ayat of if a person kills someone, then there's Qisas. In the end of the Ayat, Allah says, this is in the second surah, 178th Ayat, فَمَنْ عُفِيَ لَهُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ شَيْءٌ فَاتِّبَاعٌ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ فَمَنْ عُفِيَ لَهُ So the one who is pardoned, عُفِيَ لَهُ يعني the killer who was pardoned. مَنْ عُفِيَ لَهُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ From his brother. He was pardoned from his brother. شَيْءٌ For what he has done, فَاتِّبَاعٌ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Then the one who pardons him and takes blood money instead, يعني the family of the murdered person, they take blood money instead, Allah says then they should seek it, يعني Gently, not don't be harsh, and that the person who owes the blood money should give it out without any you know, delaying it. What's the point here though? فَمَنْ أُفِيَ لَهُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ أَخِيهِ The scholar said أَخِيهِ means the maqtool, the person who was killed. His family may pardon that person. Instead of killing them, that's the qisas, they'll take blood money. So whoever has been pardoned by the family of the person who he killed, he's the killer and he killed somebody. And the family of the murdered person pardons him. Shaykh al Salam Taymiyyah is saying here that Allah calls the maktul, the person who was killed, akhi, and he's the brother of the person who killed him. So the ukhuwa imaniyah, he killed somebody and he didn't go out of iman. He remained a believer with yani, defective iman, obviously, right? Killing people. So that's the first proof. And if it's not crystal clear, just think about it. Then this is a clear proof. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying clearly, a person killed somebody and Allah is still calling them, he's calling the person he killed his brother. <laughs> An iman. And then he mentions as a second proof, and from Surah Al-Hujurat, 49th Surah, 9th and 10th Ayat, the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اِقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِهُ بَيْنَهُمَا Yani that if two parties from amongst the believers, fight, then make reconciliation between the two of them. So two parties amongst the believers. First of all, they're fighting and Allah is calling them believers. So the iman remains. They didn't go out of Islam because they committed a major sin. Fighting is you know, from the most major of major sins. Fighting Muslims, killing Muslims. And Allah called them believers. If two parties from amongst the believers are fighting and they remain believers, then make reconciliation between them. A third party should reconcile between them. فَإِنْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُ الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيَ إِلَىٰ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ So if one of them transgresses against the other, then the third party who is making reconciliation should fight يعني, with the party who has been transgressed against, against the one who transgressed. Fight against them until they return to the command of Allah. فَإِنْ فَاعَتْ فَأَصْلِهُ بَيْنُهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقَصِّتُوا So if they come back to the to return to the command of Allah, then make reconciliation between the two yani, fighting parties with justice and be equitable between them. Inna Allah yuhibbul muqsiteen. Indeed, Allah loves those who are equitable, fair, just. Inna al-mu'minuna ikhwa fa'aslihu bayna akhawaykum. Indeed, the believers are brothers, so reconcile. Yani the third party, reconcile between the two fighting parties, between your akhawaykum, your two brothers. The two parties who are fighting each other. Reconcile between them. And Allah referred to the third party who's making the reconciliation. He referred to the two fighting parties as your two brothers. I mean they remained in Iman. Brotherhood of Iman. Even though they were fighting each other. And they remained a part of the brotherhood. Yani al al imaniyah With the party who wasn't fighting. And they're all brothers. Inim al-mu'minuna ikhwa. In spite of fighting and killing and so on. So, Shaykh al-Sam refutes this idea 
that a person became a kafir because of major sins. By these two ayat. And there are lots of other proofs. But you know, the point here is that he's being brief. He's trying to just address these issues quickly and finish with them. And he would in a forceful way that there's no escape from. The third paragraph, he refutes the Mu'tazila. He says, وَلَا يَسْلُبُونَ الْفَاسِقَ الْمِلِّي الْإِسْلَامَ بِالْقُلِّيَةِ Yani that they don't negate al-Islam bil-kulliyah. Yani they don't negate Islam completely from al-fasik al-milli. Al-fasik is the person who's outside of al-kharij an ta'atillah, person outside of obedience to Allah. The milli means the milla of Islam. Yani the person who's still a part of the deen of Islam. Yani because they committed major sins, but they didn't commit sins that was kufr, that took them out of Islam. So fisk, the scholars say is of two types. The major fisk and the minor fisk. The major fisk is kufr. And Allah mentions that in some ayats in the Quran. And the minor kuf is not, or the minor fisk is not kufr. So he's saying here, the fasik al-milli, he remains the fasik who, who, who did some fisk, that he, still he remains a part of the yani, millet al-Islam, in the deen of Islam. He didn't take him out of Islam. So they do not remove. And he, as far as the fasik who who fell into kufr, then that's a different matter. We're talking about the fasik who, who committed major sins, but not that which amounts to kufr. They didn't remove or, or negate from the fasik al-milli, the person who commits sins, but didn't go out of Islam. They're still a part of Islam. They didn't remove Islam from them completely, like the Mu'tazila did. And they didn't declare him to be eternally in the hellfire. كما تقوله المعتزلة as was, was, was said by the معتزلة you know that they removed them from Islam from Iman completely okay they said the president commit major sins the Quran said they are kafirs معتزلة said what? they are not kafirs but they are not mu'min they are in between في منزلة بين منزلتين they are in some station in between Iman and Kufr they are no longer mu'min they are out of Iman but they didn't make them go into Kufr <coughs> so, he's refuting this idea that they removed Islam from them completely and that they would be in the hellfire eternally. And then he refutes them by saying, Bel al fasiq yadkhulu fi ismi al imani al mutlaq. Kama fi qawlihi ta'ala, fatahrir raqabatin mu'mina. Surah An Nisa, 4th Surah, 92nd ayah. So he says, rather, what is correct is that the fasiq. Yani al-Milli, the one who committed major sins, but he didn't go out of Islam, he didn't commit kufr. He said, يَدْخُلُوا فِي إِسْمِ الْإِيمَانِ الْمُطْلَقِ Here, Al-Imam Muhammad bin Salih Uthaymin said, Al-Mutlaq here is not a sifr for Al-Iman. It's not Al-Iman al-Mutlaq. It's a sifr for Ism. Ismu al-Iman al-Mutlaq. Yani, Ismu al-Iman, the word Ism is, is yani, it is, it, it, it is um, its adjective is al-Mutlaq. Yani, atlaqa Ism al-Iman. And if the person is using yani, the word Iman <coughs> in an unrestricted manner, yani, without giving it any definition. Because Iman and Mutlaq, as we will see later on, Iman and Mutlaq and Mutlaq and Iman have two different meanings. Iman and Mutlaq means Iman and Kamil. A person has perfect Iman. Mutlaq and Iman means Asl Iman, that a person has some Iman, even if it's defective. So these two expressions, you just turn the words around and have two different meanings completely. A person has to be careful here. He said, Shaykh Islam tell me, it does not mean al-Iman al-Mutlaq here. He means ism al-Iman. And al-Mutlaq is a, a sifr describing ism. And that a person is mentioning the word Iman without any restriction, any, without any definition, just in the general sense. As in the saying of Allah, فَتَحْرِرْ رَقَبَةٍ مُؤْمِنَةٍ Yani the freeing of a believing slave. Freeing of a believing slave here means the slave is a believer. Whether they are fasics, Believer or whatever, just a believer. Yani that's the general sense of iman. It's not saying they have perfect... Yani when you free a believing slave, they don't have to be, have perfect iman. They just have to be a believer. So he's saying here, so the fasik is included in the name iman or the word or the expression iman, the description of iman, in some cases, as in this ayat, in Surah An-Nisa, the freeing of a believing slave, it's not doesn't mean the slave has to have perfect iman. وَقَدْ لَا يَدْخُلْ فِي إِسْمْ الْإِمَانِ الْمُطْلَقِ Same thing here. He's saying, but, and sometimes he might not be included in the ism of Iman, the description of Iman, 
يعني here again اسم يعني مطلق is describing اسم يعني where the word إيمان is used in its general sense sometimes he may not be included in it and then he gives an example of that as in the saying of Allah the Most High إنما المؤمنون الذين إذا إذا ذكر الله وجلت كلوبهم وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون سورة الأنفال إث سورة second ayah so he said, in some cases, as in the first ayat, the fasiq may be included yani, under the description of iman. And in some cases, it may not be included. So the second ayat is an example where he's not included. He's not included in the description of iman as came in this kind of ayat like this. Indeed, the believers are only those who, when Allah has mentioned, their hearts experience fear. And when the ayat of his ayat are recited to them, <coughs> it increases them in Iman. And this is a proof of increase of Iman as well. And that's part of the definition that some of the scholars gave for Iman, that it increases yani, with obedience to Allah and decreases with disobedience. And that Iman yani, varies. And yani, some people's Iman is greater than others. But this ayat is what is saying what? That the believers are only those who when Allah has mentioned their hearts feel fear, experience fear. And when his ayat are recited to them, it increases them in Iman. And they yani, put their trust in their Rabb alone. Yatawakkalun. Ala Rabbihim yatawakkalun. This is the description of believers who have perfect Iman, who have complete and perfect Iman. The fasig is not included in here. Because he doesn't have complete and perfect Iman. His Iman is defective. Because his, his fisk, his sin, yani, is a, causes a defect in his Iman. So he's not included in the Iman that's mentioned in this ayat. But he's included in the Iman that's mentioned in the other ayat. So that means what? That sometimes when Iman is mentioned, it means the Iman, yani asl Iman. And the person has Iman, even if it's defective. And sometimes it means the complete and perfect Iman. So the fasik is included when we're just talking about Iman in general, not included when we're talking about complete and perfect Iman. And Al Imam Muhammad ibn Salih Uthameen explains this, yani, at one point I'll try to read it before we finish, just so it'll be clear, yani, the point here. But in any case, the point is that here, Shaykh Al-Salam Taymiyyah is mentioned in an ayah which shows that sometimes yani, the fasik is included in Iman, and sometimes he's not included in Iman. And that's how these people deviated, because they couldn't reconcile how he can be sometimes referred to with Iman and sometimes not referred to with Iman. Depends on what kind of Iman you're talking about. If you're talking about mutlaq al-Iman, you mean aslul Iman, that a person has some Iman, even if it's defective, he's included in that. When you're talking about al-Iman al-mutlaq, an iman al kamil the perfect and complete iman, is not included in that. Because his iman is defective from his sinfulness. Then he mentions another <coughs> proof for this particular point that the fasik is sometimes not included when iman is mentioned. He mentions the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa which is reported by al-Bukhari and Muslim in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa I'm having difficulty because of my throat it's messed up and the last couple of days I've been trying to work on it but I'm straight I'm struggling right now so I'm, I'm gonna like try to um, skip some of the reading and just try to translate because I'm, I'm not gonna be able to make it <coughs> anyway the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said لا يزني الزاني حين يزني وهو مؤمن Yani the person who commits zina, fornication or adultery, at the time when they engage in that zina, he's not a mu'min. What do we mean by mu'min here? Al-Iman al-Kamil. He doesn't have complete and perfect iman. If he did, he wouldn't have been committing zina. It would have prevented him from it. So here he's not included in this type of iman that's mentioned here. Why? Because this, this, this meaning of iman here is complete and perfect iman. And he doesn't have complete and perfect iman. The proof of that that he's committing zina. So he's using this hadith as a proof what? That sometimes the fasik is not included when we use the word iman. Because sometimes the word iman, is in, what is intended by it is al-iman al-kamil. Complete and perfect iman. He's not included in that. So he says the person who commits zina at the time when they're committing zina. And after that they might repent. But at the time they're committing zina, they are not a believer. Meaning they are not a believer who has complete and perfect iman. And the same thing, the person who steals is not a believer at the time when he's stealing, and the person who drinks is not a believer when he drinks. And the person who, the, the robber, yani who openly robs 
something of value while the people are looking. He is not a believer at the time when he is yani, committing the robbery. <clears throat> Then Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah closes after mentioning this hadith and he says, Naqulu. So, so what do we say then? And he, they say, the Khawari said that the person who commits the major sins is a kafir. The Mu'tazila said, he, we didn't say he's a kafir, but he's not a believer. He's in between somewhere. And the Murjiya said, he's a mu'min. Kamil al-Iman, Iman Kamil. And he has complete and perfect Iman. Because actions don't really count. Because it's not a part of Iman. According to the Murajah. But in any case here he said. So what do we do with this person then? That sometimes could be described with Iman. And sometimes cannot be described with Iman. Depending on what kind of Iman you're talking about. Depending on what kind of Iman you're talking about. He said. Naqulu. Yani we. Ahli Sunnah Jama'ah. We say. Huwa mu'minun naqisu al-Iman. And he's a believer. Who has defective Iman. He's a believer. But he has defective Iman. He doesn't completely go out of Iman, but his Iman is defective. Or we say, another way to describe him, we can say, Mu'minun bi imanihi wa fasikun bi kabiratihi. And he is a believer based upon the Iman that he has, even if it's defective, but he has Iman. So he's a believer based on if we consider his Iman, and he is a fasik. At the same time, he's a fasik based on his committing the major sin. So, in that way, he said, فَلَا يُعْطَى إِسْمَ الْمُطْلَقِ So he's not given الْإِسْمَ الْمُطْلَقِ الْإِمَان الْمُطْلَقِ Complete and perfect Iman. That description, he's not given that. وَلَا يُسْلَبُ مُطْلَقَ الْإِسْمَ Nor is he deprived of or denied مطلق الْإِسْمَ يعني مطلق الْإِمَان Meaning, the, the asl of Iman. That he has some Iman even if it's defective. So he's not given the description of the complete and perfect Iman. And he's not deprived of yani, the asl iman. That he's not deprived of being described with iman at all, even if his iman is defective. And that's how we reconcile between yani, these two apparent contradictory matters. Is he a mu'min or is he a kafir or is he in between? He's a mu'min who has defective iman. Or he's a mu'min in consideration of his iman, even if it's defective. And he's a fasik in consideration of his fisk, his sinfulness. That's the end of what Shaykh Al-Sahim Taymiyyah mentions. And then the commentary. <clears throat> the Shaykh, he says, Rahimahullah, in the commentary, this is an, a, a magnificent research or topic from the Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that is, that Iman is speech and action. Speech of the heart and the tongue, and actions of the heart and the limbs. Notice that he said actions of the heart and the limbs. He didn't say action of the heart and the tongue and the limbs. And we, we said already that why? Because he already said the speech of the heart and speech of the tongue. So the speech of the tongue includes its action. Includes its action. This is the position. Oh, here. And here is the problem with the translation that caused the translator to make a mistake about the saying that the Murjia from the Mu'tazila and Khawarij. Um, so, <clears throat> it's printed here, and this is an oral presentation, right? Somebody transcribed it, so either they made the mistake, or somebody typed up the transcription, or they made the mistake. Or well, somebody made the mistake. Anyway, it came out wrong. It says, this is what? This is the position of Ahlul Sunnah al-Jama'ah. Khilafan lil-murji'ah. Min al-mu'tazila wal-khawarij. It shouldn't be min al-mu'tazila wal-khawarij. That's a mistake. But rather it should say, and if you're reading from Arabic, you should change it. Khilafan lil-murji'ah. Stop. And this is the position of Ahlul Sunnah al-Jama'ah. That is speech and action. Speech of the heart and the tongue and actions of the heart and the tongue and the limbs. This is the position of Ahlul Sunnah al-Jama'ah. Khilafan lil-murji'ah. In country. Contradiction or contrary to the murjia, who say that what? Actions are not part of Iman. Then the new sentence should say, Wal Mu'tazila wal Khawarij Aidan. Yani, this is a new sentence. The Mu'tazila and the Khawarij also, Yani, believe that speech and action is a part of Iman, like the Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah. 
And they included with Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah on this point of including speech and action as a part of Iman. So the next sentence you say, Wal Ma'atazila wal Khawarij Aidan, Yani Aidan, meaning they also believe that Iman includes speech and action. And then he, that's where they agree with Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah, and then he shows where they differ with Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah. Then he says, Walakin al Khawarij, Yuafakuna ala had al Had. But the Khawarij are in agreement with Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah to this point that Iman includes speech and action. Lakin and the al Iman la yazid wa la yankus. Here's where they differ. But with the Khawarij, they believe that Iman does not increase and it doesn't decrease. They believe it includes speech and action, but it doesn't increase and decrease. He's talking about the Khawarij. Now he adds to the Khawarij, but this, now we're talking about the Khawarij right now, but he adds to the Khawarij, وَهَكَذَا الْمَعْتَزِلَ عِنْدَهُمْ لَا يَزِيدُ وَلَا يَنْقُسُ And likewise the Ma'tazila also believe that it includes speech and action, but it doesn't increase and decrease. So the Ma'tazila and the Khawarij both believe that Iman doesn't increase or decrease. Now, note though, here he's talking about the Khawarij though. وَلَكِنَ الْخَوَارِجُ وَافَقُونَ عَلَى هَذَا الْحَدْ وَلَكِنَ أَنْدُهُمْ إِمَانْ لَا يَزِيدُ وَلَا يَنْقُسْ And then he goes on to say about Khawarij. بَلْ إِمَّا يُوجَدْ كُلُّهُ أَوْ يَذْهَبْ كُلُّهُ وَلِهَذَا كَفَّرُوا بِالْعَاسِي It says it should be بِالْمَعَاسِي وَخَلَّدُوا فَائِلَهَا فِي النَّارِ So he's talking about the Khawarij. He's saying, but the Khawarij say it doesn't increase and increase. In increase and decrease, <coughs> but rather iman is either yujad kulluhu, it's complete. You either have iman or you have kulluhu, or the whole of the iman leaves. You either have iman or you have no iman, one or the other. And that's why he says, well, you have a kafru bil maasi. That's why they declared the people who commit major sins to be disbelievers because they said either you have iman or you don't have it. Once you commit major sins, you don't have it anymore because you either have total iman or you have no iman. So that's why they said then, person commit major sins, then they, they are kafir. Khalas. Walihada kafaru. It says, bil asi, it should say, bil maasi. Wa khalladu fa'ilaha. Fa'ilaha, going back to maasi. Finna. This is why they declared the people who commit major sins to be disbelievers and that they will remain in the hellfire because of their committing the major sins. Now he goes back to Mu'tazila. That was about the Khawarij. And then he says, "Well, Mu'tazila wafaqatuhum ala dalika fi hukm al-akhirah." And the Mu'tazila agreed with the Khawarij, <coughs> not about them being kafirs, but about the point of what <coughs> the ruling concerning these people in the next life. <coughs> that is, the Mu'tazila agreed that the Asi, the people who commit major sins, are, will remain in the hellfire eternally. All right. So he's saying here, Shaykh is saying, Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah say that Iman is speech and action, and he gave the details of it, as opposed to the Murajah, say it doesn't include actions. Then he says, but the Mu'tazila and the Khawarij are in agreement with Ahl Sunnah that includes speech and actions, except that both of them say it doesn't increase and decrease. Rather, it must either be present completely or it leaves completely. And that's why the Khawarij declared the people who commit major sins to be kafirs and declared them to be based on those major sins in the hellfire eternally. And the Mu'tazila agreed with them on one part of that. Not that they kafirs, that the committer of major sins is a kafir, but they agree with them in the next life that they would be, the person who commit major sins would be in the hellfire eternally. And then he just mentions the Murja in passing. The Murja akhraju al-amal min al-iman. So what is the position of the Murja? They removed actions from iman. They said actions are not a part of Iman. <laughs> I, I think I won't be able to talk with this in my mouth. <laughs> After, inshallah, jazakallah khair. <laughs> it would help, but then I won't be able to talk. <laughs> Allah mustaan. <coughs> so the, what is the position of the Murjia? That they have removed actions from Iman. They said actions are not part of Iman. And that's why they said that the person who commit major sins is a mu'min with complete and perfect Iman. Because action is not a part of Iman. So you can commit sins, it doesn't matter. It's not, that has nothing to do with your Iman. Your Iman is what's in your heart. And if you have that, khalas, you're good to go. Perfect Iman. They said, the Murajiya said, وَقَالُوا إِنَّهُ قَوْلْ فَقَدْ They said that Iman is just speech. Or it's tasdik, yani affirmation of the truth. Or it's both of them. Affirmation in the heart and speech, yani saying it. 
but not including actions. All of these groups that I've mentioned here, all of them are ghalita, are mistaken, wadala, and astray from the straight path. And what is correct? Sheikh says, which the Ahlul Sunnah will jama'ah upon, that iman is speech and action. Yani including the, yani the conviction that's in the heart, it also does include speech and action. Speech of the heart and the tongue, and actions of the heart and the limbs of the body. Here the Shaykh gives some examples of iman, of the heart, and iman of the tongue, and iman of the limbs of the body, and that's where also a mistake came in the Arabic. But, I mean, we have to examine the Arabic as well. So, al mahabba for Allah, loving for the sake of Allah, and fear of Allah, and sincerity for Allah, this, this is actions of the heart. These are actions of the heart. What tasdeeq amanun qalbi, and also affirmation of the truth is an action of the heart. And then what is mentioned here is just a repetition of the same thing, probably a mistake from the transcriber or somebody. What tasdeeq bil qawl amal qalbi, yani tasdeeq is an action of the heart. Here's the mistake from the Arabic. What tasbih, what tahlil, what dhikr, amalu, amalun jarihi. Yani the tasbih saying Subhanallah and tahlil saying La ilaha illallah and the dhikr remembering Allah <coughs> is action of the limbs. That's a mistake. Saying Subhanallah, <laughs> saying La ilaha illallah, praising and glorifying Allah is not from the limbs; it's from the tongue. Yani is amal al lisan. So they translated just like it came in the Arabic, even though it's clearly wrong. May Allah protect us from our own shortcomings. Was salat, was zakat, was siyam, was hajj, was jihad, min amalu al jawari. And prayer, and charity, and fasting, and hajj, and jihad are all from the actions of the limbs. Wa hakadha ahl sunnah wal jama'ah indahum, anna al iman qawlun wa amalun. So this is how it is with the Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah. According to Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah, Iman is speech and action. And it increases with acts of obedience to Allah. And it decreases with acts of disobedience to Allah. And here, the Shaykh is, uh, in this part of the definition, he's alluding to the fact that there are things that cause the increase and decrease of Iman. And this is just general. That is increased by acts of obedience. And it's decreased by acts of disobedience. But that's not the only, those are not the only things that increase and decrease of Iman. As Shaykh al mentions, and other scholars mention in other places, that from the most important things that are the causes of increase of Iman, is that a person has knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his asma and sifat. It's from the most important things that will increase a person's Iman. The more a person knows Allah, the more they will have greater Iman. And from the most important things that are cause of increase of Iman is that a person ponders and reflects and contemplates the ayat of Allah. al qawniya wa shara'iyya. Yani the signs of Allah in the creation, the greatness and magnificence of His creation, and the, yani the ayat of, of the sharia, yani the ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person reflects upon those things, it will increase their Iman. And also he mentioned from the things that increase Iman is it kathratu, Al-Amal al-Salihat, that a person does a lot of good deeds, which he alludes to here. And also from the things that increase Iman is that a person abandons sinful deeds with the intention of seeking nearness to Allah. A person abandons sinful deeds with an intention of trying to get near to Allah. And the things that cause decrease are the opposite of those four things. The opposite of those four things, for the sake of time. Just the opposite, just think of what's the opposite of those things. Inshallah, you can figure it out. If not, go back to the explanation of Aqid al by Shaykh Muhammad ibn Sa'ad al and you'll find him mentioning there yani with some details. So here the Shaykh, he says, so, yani in summary, um, yani Ahl Sunnah al say that Iman is speech and action. It increases with acts of obedience and decreases with acts of disobedience and other things besides that. And then he says, وَقَوْلُ in his definition, قَوْل قَوْلٌ وَعَمَلٌ يَدْخُلُ فِيهِ الْخَوَارِجْ وَالْمُعْتَزِلَ And this statement in the definition of Iman that includes speech and action, this includes the khawarij and the mu'tazila because they said Iman includes speech and action. So they're included in that part. Where do they get excluded? وَبِقَوْلِهِ يَزِيد بِالطَّاعَ وَيَنْقُصْ بِالْمَعَاسِ يَتِمُّ إخراج المعتزلة والخوارج والرد عليهم. But when he said, Shaykh al he said that Iman increases with obedience and decreases with disobedience, 
the, this completes the removal of the Mu'tazila and the Khawarij from the correct yani manhaj of Ahl Sunnah Jumu'ah concerning Iman and this is a refutation against them. Where are the the murji'a removed from the correct definition of Iman? Wa ikhraj al-murji'a bi qawlihi qawlun wa 'amal. Yani the murji'a are removed by what? By the statement that Iman includes speech and action because they said Iman doesn't include action. فالواجب على المؤمن أن يعتقد هذه العقيدة ويعمل بمقتضاها. So what is obligatory upon the believer is that he holds this aqidah, and that a person believes in this aqidah in this way, and that he acts upon what it requires of him, and that he acts upon what is required by this aqidah. What does this aqidah require of you? Well, first of all, if you know that iman is speech and action, it's not just something that you claim is in the heart. But it's going to be manifested in your speech and your action in the world. A person has to then pay attention to what they're saying, what they're doing. They have to be using speech that is an increase of Iman. And actions that are increase of Iman and avoiding the opposite of them. And there are also actions of the heart that a person has to pay attention to which are more important than the actions of the tongue or the actions of the limbs. And from the most important of them is ikhlas. Is ikhlas. And the person does whatever they do or says whatever they say sincerely for the sake of Allah and so on. And loving for the sake of Allah and hating for the sake of Allah and having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above and beyond everything else, everybody, parents and friends and spouse and siblings and uh, uh, sheikhs and whoever that you depend upon. And you're having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are from the greatest actions of, that a person can have, the actions of the heart. And then, I hope we're near the end. Allah musta'a. Okay. Anyway, the Shaykh is repeating here some of what and Shaykh is trying to me mention. I do want to finish tonight. And from the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that they do not deprive or deny Al Fasik Al Milli. They do not deprive the sinful Muslim who is identified with the Deen of Islam. Al Muntasib. Al Muntasib. Islam. Yani mean he's identified, he's still a part of Islam, the deen of Islam, the creed of Islam. He is not deprived of ism al-iman bil kulliyah. He's not completely deprived of the description of iman in its entirety. As the Khawari said, he's a kafir. And he's not yani resigned to remain in the hellfire forever. As the Mu'tazila and Khawari said. So they don't deprive him of iman like the Khawarij nor do they declare him to be <coughs> eternally in the hellfire like the Mu'tazila. I'm just translating now to try to finish. بَلَ الْفَاسَكْ يَدْكُلْ فِي إِسْمَ الْإِمَانَ الْمُطْلَقِ مِثْلَ مَا فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى But the Fasik is included in the name Iman. Yani here again, Al-Mutlaq is describing Ism. Yani إِذَا أَطْلَقَ Ism al-Iman. And if a person just uses Iman in the general sense, the fact is Fasik is included in that, as in the ayat that we mentioned previously from Surah Nisa, the freeing of a believing slave. And whether that believing slave, Iman is complete and perfect or defective. And also in the saying, Ya illadina amin wa taqullah. And in the saying of Allah in Surah Tawbah, 9th Surah, 119th ayah, O oh, you who believe, observe taqwa of Allah. The Fasik is included in that. Because that Iman is the Iman that includes the one who has defective Iman and perfect Iman. Or everybody is included in that. وَيَدْخُلْ فِي خِطَابِ يَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا So he's included when Allah says, O oh, you who believe. Fasik is included in that. person who has complete and perfect Iman and defective Iman are all included. But أَمَّا فِي مَقَامَ الْمَدْحِ وَالثَّنَا But when it is a situation or a place where Allah is praising and commending the believers, <coughs> then the Fasik is not included in this. Like in the saying of Allah that the Shaykh mentioned, Shaykh Sallam Taymiyyah mentions from Surah Al-Anfal, 8th Surah, 2nd Ayat, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرُوا اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ كُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَاتِ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَاتُهُمْ إِمَانًا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ That indeed the believers are only those, yani the believers meaning here what? Who have complete and perfect Iman, are only those who, when Allah is mentioned, their hearts experience fear, and when Allah is, when His ayats are recited, <coughs> It increases them in Iman and they put their trust totally in their Rabb. And he's also not included, as in the hadith that Shaykh al Taymiyyah mentioned, that the Zani, while he's committing zina, fornication or 
adultery, he is not a believer. And he's not a person who has complete and perfect iman while well, he's committing that. So he's not included in that praiseworthy station. And the complete and perfect iman, the people of complete and perfect iman, they don't commit zina. They don't steal, they don't drink alcohol. Because their complete and perfect iman prevents them from that. So he mentioned that hadith, and the point is that this hadith is an indication of commendation or praiseworthiness of the believer who doesn't engage in those things. The fasik is not included in that description of iman there, because that means iman, that's complete and perfect, and he also used as, as he's not, he's not, he also used, and he, he's not included in what? لَيْسَ minna مَنْ ضَرَبَ أَوْ لَطَمَ الْخُدُودِ أَوْ شَقَّ الْجُيُوبِ أَوْ دَعَ دَعَوَ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ That he's not from us, and he's not from the Muslims. Meaning, not that he became a kafir, but he doesn't have complete and perfect Islam and Iman. He's not from us, those who ضَرَبَ الْخُدُودِ يعني who slap or strike the cheeks, or who tear open the front parts of the garments. يعني يعني in, in, um, when somebody dies or something like this. Or those who call to the, with the calls of jahiliyyah, of ignorance. He's not from us. The Prophet وسلم, is not saying the person who does this became a kafir. But he's saying he doesn't have complete and perfect Islam or Iman. And then he says to the end of whatever else is similar to this. And then he says, وَبِهَذِهِ يُعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنَ الْكَامِلِ لَا يَدْخُلْ فِي حُكْمَ الْمَذْمُومِينَ that the, from this we, come, we know that the iman, the believer who has complete and perfect iman, is not included in the, the hukum of, the, of, the, of where, the people are, where the people are blameworthy. And that the believer, al-mu'min al-naqis, yani the believer who has imperfect iman or defective iman, he is included in those blameworthy descriptions like the one who commits zina. And at the time that he commits zina, he's not a believer and who steals, and so on, to the end of the hadith. And he said, he's not included in that praiseworthy description of iman, mu'min, in that hadith, and who doesn't do these things, لِأَنَّهُ نَاقِسْ iman Because his iman is defective. In that hadith, وَهُوَ mu'min, He doesn't do these things while he's a mu'min. He says, يَعْنِي الْإِمَانِ الْكَامِلِ He doesn't do those things if he has perfect, complete and perfect iman. So the mu'minun, al-kummal, يعني the complete and perfect believers who have complete and perfect iman, Yani, يُخْرَجُ مِنْهُمْ الْفَسَقَ Yani the people, the fusaq, the fasaqa, the people of corruption and sin, yani are removed from them. They are not a part of those who are described with complete and perfect iman. Then he says, وَوَصْفُ الْإِيمَانِ هُوَ الْمُسْلِمَ الَّذِي يُخَاطِبْ بِالْإِيمَانِ فَقَدْ يَدْخُلُ فِيهِ الْفَاسِقْ فِي قَوْلِهِ يَا يُوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا سُرُتُ بَقْرَةِ وَفِي قَوْلِهِ إِنَّ الدِّينَ إِنَّ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ Yani the description of iman may be a description of a Muslim who's being addressed with Iman. Yani like when Allah says, for example, yani the fasik is included in this, when Allah says, Ya ayyuladheena amanu. Yani he includes everybody who has Iman, whether it is complete and perfect Iman or defective Iman. <clears throat> and likewise in the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the deen in the Allah Islam. It includes all the people of Islam and Iman. And also in the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-Muslim akhul Muslim, the Muslim is the brother of a Muslim. <coughs> what is that? <coughs> Minty, thank you. <coughs> Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. I should have thought of that earlier. Zakalah <coughs> khair. And he's also <coughs> included in the description in the hadith of the Prophet al Muslim, Akhul Muslim, the Muslim's brother of a Muslim. And this includes all Muslims, those whose iman is defective or perfect or whatever. يَدْخُلُوا فِي هَذَا الْفَاسِقِ Fasik is included in this, and other than the fasik is included in this. لَكَنْ إِذَا جَاءَ الْإِمَانِ مُطْلَقًا مَا الْمَدْحِ لَمْ يَدْخُلْ فِيهِ الْفَاسِقِ But when iman, the description of iman comes, يعني in a, in a general sense, but it, it's, it comes along with praise. يعني praising the people of iman, the fasik is not included in that. But when it's just iman is mentioned, wamal itlaq yadkhul al fasik. When it's mentioned without praise, then the iman, then the fasik is included in that. And this is, has already passed. And he said, like the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so whoever, yani the person who killed a man, and then he's pardoned by that person's family, فَمَنْ عُفِيَ لَهُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ أَخِيهِ means the maqtul, the person who was killed. If the person who killed him is pardoned, then he still, yani, doesn't go out of Iman, he still describes him, Allah describes him as his brother. And he described the person he killed as his brother in Iman. Sammahu akhan, 
Allah called, the person was killed, and Akh, huwa qatil, and he is the killer. And the person who's, who he said, Akhi is the maqtul. And also the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hujurat, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً yani the, the believers are brothers to one another. وَقَدْ بَغَى بَعْدُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْدُ وَمَا ذَلِكَ سَمَّاهُ إِخْوَةً yani When those people, two groups of the Muslims fought. And Allah said, make reconciliation between them. And the end of the ayah said, that the believers are brothers to one another, even though some of them transgressed against others. And nonetheless, He still named them as brothers in Iman. That means the Iman remained. Al Khulasa, yani the Shaykh says, summary of the matter is the Fasik is included in Ism Al Iman Al Mutlaq. Yani when the name Iman is used in its general sense without any restriction, Fasik is included in that as in Ya Yuladina Amanu. And also as included in Fatahir Raqaba Mu'mina, the freeing of a believing slave. And whatever is similar to that. Walayat Khul Fil Iman Al Kamil, but he is not included when we talk about the complete and perfect Iman. الذي مدح أهله يعني the, when those people of Iman are being praised then he's not included in that and this is like the saying of Allah إنما المؤمنون يعني the believers indeed the believers are only those who when Allah has mentioned their hearts experience fear and when his ayat are recited they increase in Iman and they put their trust in Allah he's not included in that those who establish the prayer and from that which they have been given they spend in the way of Allah these ayats in Surah Al-Anfal he's not included in the description of Iman when Allah is praising the people of Iman for their praiseworthy characteristics. And likewise, yani the Zani, when he's committing zina, he's not a mu'min. Yani he's, not, he's not a person who has complete and perfect Iman. Or when he steals to the end of the hadith, then fisqahu bil azala anhu kamal al-Iman. That's because his acts of disobedience, his sinfulness, his fisq, due to disobedience to Allah, has removed from him the perfection of Iman. So he is called a Muslim. Or he is called a, mu- a, a mu'min who has defective iman. Or he is called a mu'min because of, in light of, in consideration of he, his iman. And he's called a fasiq in light of, in consideration of his major sins. فَلَيَعْتَى الْإِسْمِ mutlaq. So he's not given الْإِسْمِ mutlaq. Yani mu'min. He's not just described as, yani الْإِسْمِ mutlaq. Here he means al-iman al-mutlaq. Al-iman al-mutlaq. That means al-iman al-kamil. So he's not given this description of having complete and perfect iman, just as a believer with complete and perfect iman. وَلَا يُسْلَبُ Nor is he deprived of mutlaq al-ism, yani mutlaq al-iman. Nor is he deprived of mutlaq al-iman. And he's not deprived of, of being described with iman at all. Yani just general description of iman, even if it's defective. فَلَا يُقَالُ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَا يُقَالُ مُؤْمِنٌ كَامِلَ al-iman. So the fasik you don't say about him, he is a believer who has perfect iman. Nor do you say he's not a believer at all. إِلَّا بِهَذَا الْقَصْ Except with this intention. Unless you intend, when you say he's not a believer, you meaning, if you mean by that, he's not a believer who has complete, you know, perfect and complete iman. And in this way, we, yani, this is the way you refute the Mu'tazila and the Khawarij. وَيُسِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنَ عَلَىٰ قِيدِ الْأَهْلِ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجُمَعَةِ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ الْعَظِيمِ الَّذِي ضَلَّتْ فِيهِ أَفْهَامِ وَزَلَّتْ فِيهِ أَقْدَامِ وَاللَّهُ مُسْتَعَانِ He said, so then the believer becomes yani, upon the aqeed of Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jum'ah. If you follow this way, you become upon the aqeed of Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jum'ah in this great magnificent subject or topic of Iman. And what are the limits or the definition of Iman? Yani this matter about which many people, they, understa- they have deviated in their understanding. ضَلَّتْ فِي afham. People have misunderstood. وَزَلَّتْ فِي akdam, And they have slipped. Their feet have slipped. Meaning they erred in this matter. If a person follows the Aqeed of Ahl Sunnah Al-Jum'ah, then they will yani, be on the correct path. And they will avoid the deviation of misunderstanding and the slipping of the people who slipped. وَاللَّهُ musta'an, And Allah is the one from whom... Help is sought. And Allah is the one from whom help is sought. And it's time for the Adhan. So I just want to read quickly, just and in not even one minute. Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih Uthaymeen says, the author, Sheikh Al-Islam Uthaymeen says, 
يعني in the description of the فاسق who commits sins هو مؤمن ناقص الإيمان أو مؤمن بإيمانه فاسق بكبيرته يعني what we just read at the end that he is a believer who has defective إيمان or he is a believer in consideration of his إيمان and he is a فاسق يعني sinful person in consideration of his major sins he's not given يعني the description of complete and perfect إيمان nor is he removed from the description of إيمان totally he said this is the description of how we describe the فاسق الملي According to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, he said, in the difference between mutlaq al shay wa shay al mutlaq, mutlaq al shay wa shay al mutlaq, and the shay al mutlaq who a shay al kamil. Yani al iman al mutlaq means al iman al kamil. Wa mutlaq al shay, the opposite wording, yani aslu al shay, wa in kana naqisan. And the mutlaq of iman, it means the asl iman, even if it is. Defective. We'll start with this. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubi ilayk. I accept Allah for myself and for each of you that he grant us success in doing whatever we do sincerely for his sake alone. And that he recognize, record, and reward our good deeds and pardon, forgive, and overlook our mistakes and errors. And that he grant us athabat upon us surat al-mustaqeem. Until we return to him in a condition in which we are pleased with him and pleasing to him. We accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant complete and speedy recovery to those amongst us who are sick, and to shower his rahmah upon those who have passed away, fill their graves with light and make them spacious, and admit them into his paradise and save them from the punishment of the grave and the punishment of the hell. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his magnificent mercy and his kindness and his goodness that he rescue and save the Muslims who are being tortured and persecuted and murdered in Palestine and other places wherever they may be in the earth. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them protection from himself. That he protects them from before them and from behind them. From their right and from their left and from above them and from behind them. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Inshallah if there's any questions or any comments or any corrections. Inshallah we can do it after the salat. Uh, and whoever's able to stay inshallah will just sit for a few minutes. And maybe go over a couple of points that we're unable to mention in the class tonight. Inshallah.